Norman R. Blank was a modern Renaissance man. A man of means, he was able to indulge his passions for collecting and study in many areas. Beyond the antique firearms that he collected passionately over many decades, he was also interested in classic Ferraris, fine wine, and antiquarian books. He was a keen hunter and very accomplished shot, going as far as attaining his professional hunter's license in South Africa. His primary passion was the collecting of fine firearms, and his collection spans all stops between finest noble wheel lock firearms, right up until the most modern breech loader, which he custom ordered from James Purdy and Son, his favored gunmaker. Within the sphere of antique arms collecting, he corresponded and befriended many of the great names of the day, including W. Keith Neal, who mentored Mr. Blank in his early collecting career. Throughout this video, we'll be discussing some of my favorite firearms from the Norman R. Blank collection, which will be included in our December premiere auction. To begin with, directly in front of me, is a very rare double barrel blunderbuss with flip over bayonet. Made by Barber of Newark, a regional maker, but nonetheless would have been supplying fine firearms to stately homes and nobility in his area. Dating from the last quarter of the 18th century, this unusual gun would have provided reassuring firepower, whether used to protect a coach from highwaymen or protect one's stately home from intruders. The ribless double barrel configuration allows the hollow triangular formed bayonet to sit flush with the top of the barrels rather than protruding above the top as they normally do in single barrel versions. Centre front of the table is a traditional Scottish Highland belt pistol. With its ram's horn butt and all metal construction, this type of pistol is unique to Scotland. Dating from circa 1770 to 1780, this pistol is profusely engraved with fine scroll work. The scroll work on the stock is embellished with silver inlay, and it also features three large domed oval silver initial escutcheons. With its ram's horn butt and button trigger, this is very typical of a Highland pistol. Flanking the Scottish pistol are a very fine pair of Mortimer double barrel carriage pistols. The Mortimer gun making dynasty started with Harvey Walklake Mortimer who made these pistols. They are signed on the rib, gun maker to his majesty and feature side-by-side -side brown Damascus barrels. These pistols are silver hallmarked with London assay marks dating to 1811. They would have been made for traveling use rather than combat or dueling. The lock mechanisms on these pistols feature sliding safeties which would lock the hammers at the half cock position. The priming pans are also waterproof. This means that they are slightly raised with drains either side of them, the intent being that if these were carried in the rain, the water would run off the top of the frizzen or the steel and drain away from the priming powder. Moving on from self-defense weapons, I have in front of me a selection of British sporting weapons from the Norman R. Blank collection. Directly in front of me is a very large late 18th century four-bore dangerous game flintlock rifle. This single barrel piece was made by famed London gunmaker Henry Nock, better known for his famous seven barrel volley gun favored by the Royal Navy and sportsmen alike. In 1787, Henry Nock patented his famous patent breech. This was a great leap forward in the development of flintlock firearms. A separate screwed in breech piece with a shaped chamber internally, which aided the detonation and burn of the powder in the barrel. These enormous caliber single barrel muzzle loading firearms, the forerunner of the modern Nitro Express, found favor across India with Maharajas and British sportsmen alike. On this particular rifle, you can clearly see the bright blue breech piece contrasting with the brown Damascus barrel the breech piece with its gold inlaid line and gold lined maker's stamp. 
Directly in front is a fine example of a late flintlock double barrel sporting shotgun. This particular gun by the famous John Manton and Company. Comparing the lock mechanism on the Henry Knock rifle against the Manton double flintlock shotgun, you can clearly see the final development of the flintlock design with a fully waterproof pan with narrow, deep channeled priming pans leading into platinum lined vents on the patent breeches. Shotguns such as this John Manton example clearly show the origins of the modern side lock ejector shotgun that we know today. Whilst the majority of firearms in the Norman R Blank collection are muzzle loading, there are also a number of cartridge firearms. At the front of the table is a fine example of an early breech loading double barrel sporting rifle. This particular example is by Alexander Henry, the famed Scottish gunmaker, and features his 1882 patent lever cocking design. By utilizing an under lever, the elegant lines of this rifle flow from the barrels to the action with no top lever in the way. This Alexander Henry rifle is chambered for the 450-400 Black Powder Express cartridge. As nitro powders became more prevalent, you could still purchase ammunition to use in black powder proof guns that had been carefully downloaded with nitro charges, but still at safe pressures for use in these rifles. The rifle is finished in very traditional colors for a British rifle of this period, with deep browning to the barrels, vibrant case hardening to the action and mounts, and a well-figured walnut stock. Moving forward from the selection of British firearms, in front of me now are a selection of French firearms from the Norman R. Blank collection. Towards the front of the table, you will see a lightweight musket and a pair of Oxlock pocket pistols. Both of these being the work, to some extent or other, of the famous Nicolas Noel Boutte, artistic director of the factory at Versailles. The pistols are fine examples of Boutte's opulence and decorative skill. They're engraved throughout with floral motifs urns and scrolls. However, it is the exceptional relief carved hardwood and boxwood grips that really make these pistols stand out. Boutet's career spanned many changes of regime, from monarchy to revolutionary government to empire and finally back to monarchy again. But these pistols would have been made in the first decade of the 19th century. The lightweight musket with its deep blue barrel was also the product of the Versailles manufactory. Although not specifically signed by Boutet, it would certainly have been made under his direction. Again, of the Napoleonic era, this musket features a small bayonet lug on the underside of the muzzle, a bright lock signed manufacture à Versailles, and a three quarter length walnut stock. Despite being more than two centuries old, this lightweight musket remains in extraordinarily fine condition. The final item on the table in front of me is the over and under percussion carbine with four hammers and a single trigger. Made by Lepage Moutier, successor to the famous Henri Lepage and was made in the mid 19th century. This over and under carbine is an answer to the age-old problem of muzzle-loading firearms, of how to get more than one shot out of each loading. With this carbine, each barrel would be loaded twice in the superimposed fashion, and fired via the single trigger in sequence, with the front pair of hammers igniting the forward charges in both barrels, and the rear hammers igniting the second charge in each barrel. This sumptuous carbine features a highly figured French walnut butt and the metalwork throughout is decorated in low relief with etched scrollwork, including the signature along the top of the upper barrel. These are but a few of the fine and varied firearms from the Norman R. Blank collection, which will be available at our December premiere auction to be held in Bedford, Texas.